Okay, guys, what we're going to do today is we're going to service my 2009 Yamaha HPDI uh, outboard motor here. Uh, like I said, it's 2009, and it's been serviced twice since then. I've done all the service, um, so I know it, what's been in it and what's not been in it. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, change the spark plugs. We're going to uh, put a water pump in it. Uh, it has never had a water pump, so we're going to also do that. We're going to refill the uh, hydraulic lift here. Uh, never put any fluid in that, so uh, I think it's time for that. And we're going to also refill the uh, hydraulic stirring because when I come out the hole and I try to turn left or right, it's got a little stiffness in it, so we're going to uh, try to refill that. And the other thing is I got what they call mystery filters. Uh, these filters go on the back side of the uh, fuel injectors inside the motor. Um, Yamaha doesn't have these on their they site or any, any of their diagrams or uh, of, the, of this motor, but looking on YouTube, a lot of people have been changing these filters. And so I got me a couple, so I'm going to change these filters also. Uh, other than that, I think we should be good. Uh, just doing a lot of service for the boat here. Uh, fishing starts up in about two weeks here, so uh, just trying to get ready for the year. And you guys just sit back and let's get started. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the cowling off the top of the motor here. Uh, what it has is just a couple latches that you pull out. Uh, it's one on the front, one on either side of the motor. So, like I said, we got the spark plugs here. There's three on this side and three on the other side. So, we're going to do that first. Okay, to get these spark plugs out, like I said, all we got to do is pull the uh, spark plug wire out and put your wrench on it. Just uh, basically screw the uh, spark plug out. This one wasn't in there that great. Uh, I liked it to have been tighter. But we're just going to pull it out and look at it. Uh, like I said, these spark plugs have been here for two years, so uh, it's got some carbon buildup on it. I pretty much think I'm still going to have my carbon buildup in my cylinder here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay this spark plug to the side and try to keep them in order for you can see if there's any difference in the, the burn in each cylinder. Okay, you can see I got uh, all three spark plugs out on this side. Uh, as you can see on these spark plugs, the bottom two is burning pretty good. The top one uh, has some carbon built up on it. It's not as clean as the other two here. So uh, that lets me know that something's different on cylinder one here. So I'm just going to uh, replace these with new ones. Uh, I've looked inside with a flashlight and you know it's, it does have some carbon built up in there but not like it did before. I'm okay with what it looks like now and I'm just gonna put the new ones in and, and do the other side. The other side is just like this so after I get those in we'll move to the next thing. Okay I've got the new spark plugs in. Uh, I'm just putting the spark plug wires back on. Like I said, we're going to move to the other side do that. Um, then we're going to take this cover off, try to get to the uh, fuel injectors to, to replace those mystery filters. Okay, one other thing I forgot to tell you is about gapping the spark plugs. On the side of my motor on the other side, it has the uh, gap uh, specifications of the new spark plugs. Uh, it says between uh, 0 0.5 to 7 to 0 0.7 millimeters and uh, what I got right now is I got my filler gauge here and this is a uh, 0 0.06 millimeter uh, well like I said I got this just just to have a small drag in between both of these uh, contact points there so uh, like I said make sure you do that to each uh, spark plug before you put them in uh, I just want to add that Okay, now we're trying to take off uh, this cover here to get to the fuel injectors. Uh, uh, like I said, you, you got three Allen head screws here to take this middle uh, plate off. And you got two 10 millimeter bolts on this side and there's two also on this side to get this cover off. So let's take this other Allen head screw out uh, to get this cover off here. 
I'm sorry guys, I can't tell you what size Allen wrench that is because this Allen wrench doesn't have any numbers on it. Like I said, we're going to take these two bolts out on this side. I already got the two out on the other side. Okay, so this centerpiece should just be removed easily. There's two up here in this top, and there's two on the very bottom here that's holding this plate on. Um, I did have to loosen two, two 10 millimeter bolts on top of this top cover before I can get it to, uh, to come up, before I can get these tabs that's, that goes up under here loose from the top. And found out that on the back of this cover they have the coils that go to each uh, cylinder and it's attached to the back of this cover here so I did have to disconnect all the uh, connections here and I marked them with a sharpie what wire goes to what uh, port I mean they lay labeled on the uh, plastic housing here but I want to know what wires went to where for you can just plug them back up when you get ready to plug everything back up so but other than that you just have to take the spark plug wires back off uh because like i said the cause is on the back of this and there are uh two little clips that hold the bottom uh spark plug wires to uh the the wiring harness here and you just pop those out and the uh spark plug wire will come out uh other than that it should just come on out here and let me turn this around for you guys to see. As you can see, each car is on the back of this this housing, this this whole plastic housing here. So uh, that should be it on that that way. But you can get to the uh, fuel rail here that has the injectors uh, below this fuel rail. So we're gonna see about getting this fuel rail off and uh, see if we can find where those mystery. Uh, filters go like I said I'm, I'm getting this fuel rail off and uh, it was kind of a, a pain to get it off so I just want to go through what I had to do to get this fuel rail off so uh, on the fuel rail itself it has four screws uh, one at top here one in the middle one below that middle point and one at the bottom there were there are 12 millimeter screws here for that and up top, I took the fuel rail uh, pipe off that goes to the fuel pump up top here just before I can move it up because it feels like it's a solid pipe. Uh, I didn't want to break it. So they have uh, two Allen wrench nuts at the top and two here on the fuel rail itself. So, and if you look on the back, they got O-rings that, that seat that uh, fuel uh, pipe and the fuel rail and the fuel pump. Uh, I had to get a screwdriver and pry that out because you know it just wouldn't pop out with the uh, uh, with the O-rings on it. So just just take your time and you know just work it out and and pull on it and pry it just a little bit at a time. Because if you break that, I don't know how much that costs, but it'd probably be a, a pain to get it. And the actual fuel rail itself. Um, it was tough to get off also uh they got little clamps on the side here that uh it's like it's like some keepers that go on this little rail on the side of this fuel rail here uh, i popped those off and i did get a a screwdriver and and just pry barely on the bottom and just work it a little bit at a time then i pry, hold it at the top and pull it at the top just because this is aluminum so you don't want to damage any of that because if you poke a hole in it or bend it or something it, it might mess up that whole fuel rail and I'm sure that's expensive too so then one other thing uh, they had a the wire harness uh, holder on the side of this rail here and it was uh, inside of this with with two ten, two ten millimeter uh, uh, screws on it also so I just took those off so I can take the whole fuel rail off so once I moved that, I pried that fuel rail off and I actually got it off. So what you want to do is just inspect it, make sure you know all the 
dirt and grime is out of it and make sure you know you're just not caked up with anything inside of that um, what I probably do is I probably get me some some air from my air compressor and blow through that just to make sure it ain't no big chunks or anything in there okay so now I'm at the top of the fuel uh, injectors here and what I was doing uh, I was just going around and trying to clean all the crud off around the bottom of it being very careful not to damage any of it or any of these wires that goes down beside it so uh, those filters are in the top here the top of each uh, fuel injector so what they say is you gotta run a screw down in there and knock that screw up to pull those uh, filters out of those injectors so I'm gonna uh, go find me a screw that'll fit down in there and get that in and uh, we'll, we'll come back once I get that set up okay what I did I found me a screw that uh, just went you know, it just won't go down in there. And when you screw it in, it, it's going to screw inside that filter, uh, the top of that filter, uh, for the grab it. So, I just got me a screwdriver. And just try to go straight as possible you can down in that uh, filter. Don't go too far down that filter. Probably, you know, four or five turns just for the grab. And what I did, I got my <clears throat> needle nose pliers. And I just grabbed that screw like that and got me a hammer, just a small hammer, just to, just to tap on the bottom of that. You know, it's kind of awkward trying to, but if you can see, that pops out. So now you got that uh, filter out on, on that screw, you know, you just, uh, just get your needle nose and you know you have to get your screwdriver and uh, loosen that and get that filter off but uh, you do all three on this side and there's three on the other side uh, just like that replace those filters okay to put that filter in and what I did I just got a little of uh, uh, my yummy loop oil and just to put it on the top of this uh, this filter here just just for for my conscience I just want it to slide in easy as possible. So, uh, what you do is just you get that just placed inside the top of the uh, fuel injector. Get your small hammer and just barely tap on it a little bit at a time for it to go down in there and seat. And once it's uh, once it's flat in there, then uh, you got that one installed. So if you do all of them like that, you should be uh, should be okay. But like I said, I'm not a mechanic, so don't take my word for it. It's just something I've seen on uh, YouTube and outside to do it for my motor because, uh, like I said, my motor's going on seven, eight years old. So uh, I just thought I would do that. Okay, uh, so we're going to get this other side done, and we're going to move on to the next thing. Okay, I'm on the other side of the motor getting ready to take this fuel rail off. And I noticed that it's, it's different on this side. Uh, I don't know if this is the fuel regulator uh, connected right here but on top of the actual fuel rail. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pipes off the top of this fuel rail and this pipe off the top here just for I can uh, access. Uh, the actual fuel rail and the bolts before I could take that off. Uh, hopefully uh, that goes smoothly and like I said they got on this side they got four 12 millimeter bolts holding on this one down at the bottom and inside the cow in here but you can get to it pretty easy. So uh, I'm going to do that and we're going to change the filters on this side and they say it's another few uh, uh, filter up here and the actual fuel pump uh, they say it's one on this side and one on this side but where they say when I say they I said the guy that I watched on YouTube do it um, it says one at the bottom here but I, the, the access port that I see at the bottom on this one over here it looks like it's some kind of uh, 
adjustment screw on the bottom in that in that hole and I'm not gonna mess with that because like I said I'm not a mechanic uh, I just uh, you know shade tree mechanic so but I just like to do my own stuff but what I'm gonna do after I get this rail off I'm gonna actually take this plate off and hopefully that other filter is behind this plate in one of these ports on this fuel pump so let me get that going uh, like I said I'm gonna take these rails off not the rail, but the extra pipes off here for I won't damage those. And uh, we'll come back when I get that done. Okay, guys, I just thought I'd let you see uh, how I get these fuel uh, pipes off here. So I just get a screwdriver, and, and I'm pulling up on that, and I'm barely uh, just prying it loose because it's just a it's an O-ring that's holding it, and I don't want to damage those O-rings because I don't have any replacements for them. So, and they just you just slowly pull on it and it pops out so I don't you know don't think you'll break it but you know just be gentle with it and in the bottom in the same way you just pry it and pull it at the same time try not to you know wiggle it one way just trying to come straight up and like I said on this one the actual o-ring came off inside here so I'm just getting the uh, screwdriver and just pulling this o-ring out just placing it back on the uh, fuel uh, pipe here so okay now we're just gonna take these uh, four 12 millimeter bolts off just holding this fuel rail on and just another note the top and the bottom two are longer than the middle two so once you're taking those off just remember when you put it back that the uh, two middle ones are shorter than the top two and the, the top bottom top and bottom ones uh, just give you a comparison this is the top one this is the uh, bottom one so as you can see the middle ones are shorter so just remember that when you are putting it back together uh, right now this is loose uh, like I said on the side here they have these uh, wire connector hole, harness holders that's that that holds the uh, wires down the side of the fuel rail uh, and, and what I'm doing I'm just trying to look for my big screwdriver before I can pry it but and remember those fuel injectors have o-rings on it just like those uh, those pipes did so okay I've got my uh, little pry bar like I said I'm not gonna pry on it hard I'm, I'm not trying to break anything and I'm just pulling up just to give me a little leverage. Like I said, you got uh, three fuel injectors on this side that's holding it down. So now you have to pry on it a little bit to get it to pop off. See, it popped off right there. Like I said, this electrical connection on the side here, just unloosen it. Now this uh, fuel rail is out. But uh, now I got that off. And I'm going to just move these, uh, these wire clips out the way just before they be out of my way here. So right now, like I said, I got the top of the uh, fuel injectors to get those... Uh, filters out so I'm gonna get these three filters out and uh, we'll come back after uh, after that then I'll try to see about getting this top of this fuel pump off and uh, see if I can find that other filter that's behind that hopefully it's behind that okay I got that uh, fuel pump uh, top I guess housing off of that and uh, I did see a uh, filter down in there so uh, there is a filter here uh, what was on this was two uh, 13 millimeter bolts at the middle and it was two 10 millimeter bolts at the top I just unscrewed those and I did that just like I did the uh, fuel pipes uh, like I said they got o-rings on these three pipes is holding it on there so you just have to pull it and pry it a little bit so I didn't want to disconnect any of these hoses or anything so I just zip tied it back out my way before I can get to those uh, get to that filter right there so 
I'm going to take that filter out just like I've been taking the uh, injector filters out, uh, screwing the screw down in there and, and bumping it out. Uh, just a quick, another quick note. Uh, this is kind of deep inside that uh, housing here where that filter was. What I did was I got a pair of vice grips and put it on that screw that I screwed in. And I just snapped it out like that and it came right out. So uh, you won't, probably won't be able to... Uh, bump it out like I was bumping the other ones out with a little hammer that type thing so when you're putting it back in there you're going to put the new one back in and get a uh, maybe like a, a ratchet extension or something and just tap on top of it to knock it back in there so just want to give you guys that note on that okay I got the uh, fuel pump uh, back housing back on with the uh, 13, two 13 millimeter bolts and the two 10 millimeter bolts at the top. So right now what I want to do is I want to put this fuel rail on next. And uh, so make sure you put the, uh, the electrical connection back inside this fuel rail. And don't forget to uh, put the uh, plastic keepers back on, the wire keepers on the side here. So once you get that uh, lined up in the uh, the fuel injectors on the uh, the fuel rail on top of the fuel injectors you just want to give a little slight pressure down make sure you're keeping these out the way and it should just uh, push down on there easy once you like I said that's why I uh, lubed up those o-rings so once you get those on, you just want to snap those keepers back on the side. That way, everything's out the way. And then you just want to put the bolts back in, remembering the longer bolts go at the top, the shorter bolts go in the middle. And just snugging them up. You know, I'm not trying to tighten them right now. I just want to make sure they are uh, just snugged up here. Okay, so I want to start in the middle here and work my way out. Uh, I'm just getting these snug. I'm not trying to over tighten them or anything because this fuel rail is aluminum. You got to remember that. So, you, But you want it tight enough or it won't loosen up. All right, now that I got everything back on, the electrical connection back in the uh, fuel injectors, I want to start putting these uh, pipes back on from here to here, from here to here. And back on the other side there. And remember, it's one that goes from top of this block here to the bottom of the uh, fuel rail right here. Okay, I got the fuel rail back on with all the uh, pipes connected on both sides here and on the fuel pump itself at top here. Uh, got all the con injectors, uh, electrical connections plugged in. Uh, just on a note, uh, I had a little difficulty trying to figure out what pipe went where when I just laid them down uh, all the screws interchange with either one of them but the actual pipe is different links here than the different links there so just remember that once you take these off put them in a uh, some kind of order for you to know what went where because it just tucks me a little time to uh, you know turn around and make sure they fit right and then put the screws in them so that's just a note on that uh, so we got both sides done and we got the mystery filter inside the fuel pump up here. Uh, I didn't try to do the other side. I didn't. I wasn't feeling uh, comfortable with that, so I didn't do that one. Uh, so we did the three on this side and three on that other side. So we should be done with that. So now I'm just going to put the panel back on the back, and uh, we should be done with the mystery filters. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Another quick note is uh, just make sure you get your electrical connections plugged back in once you get the cover back on. And uh, just plug up your uh, spark plug wires. Get all that back con uh, connected. And we're going to put the panel back here in the middle. And we should be done with that part. So I just wanted to make sure I came back and let you guys know about the electrical connections. Thank you for watching.